Hello from Epcot's Festival of the Arts. I hope you're hungry because this is the ultimate foodie guide to the greatest Epcot festival. I have picked up my festival passport and I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to get my grub on. There is so much food to explore at this festival. It's actually my favorite festival here at Epcot for the food and a bunch of other stuff, but today it's just about the food. So let's just get right into this. I always start these Epcot festival days at the booths over by Test Track, which might be a mistake because I feel like those are busiest early in the morning. But nonetheless, we are starting over here by Test Track at Cuisine Classique. And here's a look at the menu here. We do only have two food items on the menu. There's a beef wellington and then some mussels. I decided to go with the mussels from this booth because honestly, there's nothing like eating mussels before noon. <laughs> this is actually, I'm questioning myself right now, honestly. These are the cast iron roasted PEI mussels with sauteed tomatoes, garlic, and fresh herbs for $8. Now I did not try these mussels last year and I heard that I made a mistake not trying them because they're very good. So when I was walking by, I was like, I gotta get the mussels this year, even though it's not even noon yet. But um, I got some of that tomato and garlic as well. Okay, those are actually really good. Those are very good. It's a good start to the festival. I love that tomato garlic. It's almost like a bruschetta that they have on top of the mussels. It's honestly perfect. It pairs perfectly with them. The broth in there is really good as well. And this is a ton of mussels. Like this portion is huge. So I am definitely not mad about this start. I also wanted to point out that these mussels may take a while to come out. I waited quite a bit to grab them. It is the first day of the festival, so the line might be longer than it is at other times, but they are grilling these guys up fresh. So be prepared to wait, but if you do wait, they're very good. And what did we get over here, guys? Shannon and Ryan got the beef wellington, right? It was great, okay? It was a little overdone, but that's how I like it. She was beefy and she was tough, but I take nothing of the first day of the festival as fact because they're cooking a lot of food very fast, so I'm willing to try it again. I didn't end up getting the beef wellington for myself, and after looking at it, I am kind of glad I didn't. The beef looked way too well done. A beef wellington is supposed to have a nice medium rare piece of beef in there. Even if it was medium, I would have like accepted it, but this beef was well done and it looked way too tough, so uh, I hear it was a little tough too. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay would not be happy with that beef wellington, that is for sure. Notes from the last booth, get the mussels, I'd skip on the beef wellington, although it might just be like a first day of the festival thing like Shannon said. Next up we have the deconstructed dish, which they actually moved over by Test Track this year. That was kind of surprising. And on the menu this year, we have a deconstructed BLT as well as the deconstructed key lime pie. And then down here, we've got some beverages that I am very interested in. A deconstructed strawberry mint julep, as well as a deconstructed strawberry mint julep with bourbon. I love this booth so much that we actually decided to do a clean sweep of the menu, pretty much. We got the BLT, the key lime, or key lime pie, and the deconstructed mint julep. Years ago at this booth, they used to have a dish called the deconstructed strawberry cheesecake. And that was potentially my one of my favorite Epcot festival dishes ever. It was so good. And then like, I wanna say two years ago, they replaced it with the key lime pie. I don't think it's as good, but it, it is still good. And all the other dishes are pretty much repeats except for the deconstructed strawberry mint julep, which I am very excited to try. Just me and my bro sitting here, enjoying the first day of farts. I have farted two times today already. <laughs> I ripped the biggest fart when I woke up this morning. Yo, this is staying in, so like... I, I don't care, whatever. I hope you're prepared for that. I am gonna try the deconstructed strawberry mint julep first. This one is gonna cost you $4.50. Squeeze the strawberry. So they give you like this little strawberry pipette here to squeeze in your beverage. This is such a good interactive element, I think. I agree. A good interactive element to the beverage. Should I give this a stir? I feel like I need to stir it. We, we've uh, squeezed the whole strawberry. Oh, this is about to fall out. We've squeezed the whole strawberry thing in there. So we'll give it a stir here. That like doesn't taste like a mint julep. It's so, it's like sweet. And I'm not getting any lemon. Is there lemon in a mint julep? Why not 
I guess there's usually not lemon in a mint julep. I, I, yeah, I don't think there would be. But I don't know. I'm not really digging this. I thought it would be really good, um, but it's, I'm just not loving the flavor that much. What just happened? Don't worry. Did you just squeeze the pipette into your mouth? <laughs> yeah. Here, let me do it for your video too. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I had high hopes for this. Maybe the bourbon would make it better. You could also get this with bourbon, so maybe that'll that'll do the trick. All right, Ryan, now we're gonna try the deconstructed key lime cheesecake here. That's, that's my sister. Um, the description described the key the, the cake part as like, what was, what was the word on it? It was like disgusting, in my opinion. <laughs> it is, is it's, it's, listen to this description. The deconstructed key lime pie with flexible key lime curd, key lime mousse, <laughs> graham cracker cake, and meringues. Oh, I thought what? you were laughing at flexible. Why, not curd. why does it say flexible key flexible lime curd? curd is just I've just never flexible heard. Flexible curd should not be within four words of each other. I have <laughs> never heard of a dessert being referred to as flexible. That is that you are right. That is the oddest food description I've ever. That this is from the Disney web website. This one will run you $6.50, and I guess we'll see if it's worth it. I gotta get a bite of my flexible curd there. It just jiggled. <laughs> it's very flexible, okay? The graham cracker thing, and my flexible curd on the end. I mean, it tastes pretty good. I will say that that is good flexible curd. And another thing I want to point out while eating this dish, how beautiful are all of these dishes at this booth? Like this booth, all of the all of the food items at this festival, but especially this booth, really take the term like culinary arts seriously. And all of these dishes are all like works of art. Like they take so long to make back there and to actually get them because they're like strategically placing everything on the dish to make it look so beautiful. Are you not agreeing with me? Yeah, they're, they're good looking, good looking plates. <laughs> I guess. This was pretty good as far as dessert um, comes at this festival. I do think that strawberry cheesecake that they used to have is better. Look at the monorail back there. And I wish this graham cracker was like, instead of like a cake, it's like a graham cracker cake. I wish it was just like crunchy graham cracker crumbs or something because I, I wanted a little a little crunch in this dish and I'm not getting it. All right, after that flexible key lime curd, it's time to try the deconstructed BLT. It has pork belly, onion bread, pudding, watercress, espuma, and tomato jam for $7.25. I also think there's an undisclosed mayo on this dish here in those white dots. Um, so we're staying away from that. My pork belly is almost falling into the aioli. Is that a whole thing of pork? This is a big hunk of pork belly, yeah. I got a hunk of that pork belly and some of that onion bread. I think the pork belly itself is really good. It's super crispy and I love that onion jam on top of the onion bread pudding. I just don't like the consistency of the onion bread pudding itself. It's like very soft like bread pudding and I wish it was like an actual piece of like maybe toast or something. It's a good dish, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. I did get another bite of the pork belly, just the pork itself without that like onion bread pudding. And I definitely think it's better that way. The pork is actually delicious. It's super crispy, really salty, really fatty, but that's all good. Um, and yeah, we're gonna, we're done here. The deconstructed dish, two booths down many more to go. We have finally made our way into the World Showcase and we are here at the Craftsman Courtyard. They have a couple of things I actually want to try. Look at Ryan back there. Um, we've got a grilled pork belly, a grilled marinated skirt steak, and then a coffee old fashioned. I don't think I'm gonna do the old fashioned, but these, both these foods sound really delicious. All of the booths that we've gone to so far today only have two food items, um, which is kind of less than normal. Usually each booth has like around like three items. They'll usually have two like savory options, then one dessert. Um, but so far, a lot a lot of menus with only two things. Um, I think some of them have three or a little bit more, but yeah, maybe we're just hitting all the booths with two. And since there are only two food items, you know I got both. We're gonna start off with the grilled pork belly. It has a salsa verde, a broccoli rabe, pickled peppers, and raclette cheese on grilled sourdough for $6.75. I'm not really sure how to eat this. This dish could be at the deconstructed booth. It's like a deconstruct deconstructed Sammy here. But I guess I'm gonna, I think other people are gonna try this. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go fork and knife here. All right, I have constructed a bite with everything on it.
That is fantastic. That is really good. All those flavors are so delicious together with that salsa verde and the broccoli rabe and that raclette cheese. The pork is nice and tender and crispy. I wish the sourdough was like maybe a little different. It's weird to be just like sliced sourdough like that, but that is very tasty. Best thing I've eaten so far, actually. Wow. That's good. It, the, the sauce and like the broccoli rabe almost gives me like spinach dip vibes. Really good. And now onto the grilled marinated skirt steak with caramelized onions and mushrooms, blue cheese fondue and arugula on a grilled French roll for seven bucks. I mean here, this does have blue cheese on it and I don't love blue cheese, but I decided to get it as is. I feel like that's gonna add a good component of the dish. So we'll see how it tastes. Wow. Craftsman's Courtyard. Stepping it up this year. All those flavors are so delicious together. The onions with the blue cheese. I don't even like blue cheese. And this is phenomenal. My favorite part though, got a little balsamic glaze on there. The sweetness of that with that blue cheese and the steak is honestly phenomenal. I don't know which one I like better from this booth. I totally expected to like that pork belly better. I don't know what I expected from this steak, but I did not expect it to expect to like it as much as I am. I, I, when I took a bite of the pork, I was like, best thing I've had this festival. I think I like the steak sandwich better. That is so good. Easily the best thing I've had so far. And let me also say, both things were $7 or less. I think the steak sandwich was like seven, the pork was like six seventy-five. Those are pretty good portions for what you're getting. I mean, on my steak sandwich, I got more steak than you get over in Mexico, huh? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Now, I am not, I don't think I'm gonna get anything from Mexico actually, but Shannon picked up this uh, carne asada. Is it carne asada with like a grilled, a griddled cheese there? And this was like 1050. There are, yeah. I see three bites of meat on that plate for 10.50. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm skipping Mexico this year. I think we are gonna skip through Mexico today. They do have a couple of things on the menu. Promise and Phoebe got that carne asada. And then they also have like a lobster taco kind of thing. What I had my eye on though was this smoky banana bliss margarita, but I don't think I am going to get it because the line is a little long. I think I might skip it this time, but maybe next time. We are kind of in a little bit of a time crunch here. I always like to finish my videos before it gets dark out. And um, we're running out of daylight quickly here. So I'm trying to like prioritize everything that I definitely want to get. So I am going to be skipping a couple of booths, but don't worry, I will be back with another Festival of the Arts video uh, where I try the things that I missed. We're walking through Norway headed to China and I just came to the realization that Norway never has a festival booth. I wonder why that is. But a country that does have a booth is China, which I'm going to be skipping today. I usually end up skipping this booth here. They have some General Tso's chicken chew mai, a pork bun and sesame balls, and then some good drinks. I do like the drinks from this booth, but the food is always, uh, well, not my favorite. Since we are skipping China, that means our next country is actually going to be Germany, which has honestly probably one of my favorite food booths for this festival. I keep saying, I feel like I say that for every for every booth, but Germany always has some hits. They have the same menu that they did last year and I really like both items. Here's a look at the menu and some of those food items that I was talking about, the red wine braised beef short rib and that black forest cake, oh man. Both of them are so good. They also have a cider, some rosé, a frozen rosé, a rosé flight. Ooh, that sounds good. But I think I'm just sticking to the food here. First up, we have the red wine braised beef short rib with parsnip puree, broccolini, baby potatoes, and a balsamic glaze for $8.75. All right, the true test of a short rib is how tender it is. Let's see if this is gonna like just fall apart. Let's see, it should. Oh, it's a little tough today. I might actually need to pull out a knife. Not a good sign. All right, I want to get some of that parsnip puree in there with that balsamic. The short rib is definitely a little tough. When I've got this in previous years, it's not as tough. It's very tender. Um, today, maybe it was just cooked poorly a little bit. Um, but I will say, I think I just got a bad batch because 
usually it's very good. I do really enjoy like the parsnip puree though. I'm, I'm shocked at how much I enjoy it. It has a great flavor and that balsamic with everything on the plate is just perfect. Was there just a bee on my shoulder? Yeah. Why didn't you say anything? You were filming, I didn't mess you up. <laughs> you should have said bee. <laughs> no, but just the quality of the meat isn't there for me today, but usually it is. And let's finish with some dessert. This is the Black Forest Cake. It's a chocolate mousse with Morello cherries and Chantilly cream for $4.75. I gotta grab a bite of this one here. I, I didn't get this on opening day last year, and then I got it um, like a couple days later and fell in love with this dessert. It's so rich. It's so rich. I do, what I do wish is it had a little like sea salt on top maybe to cut that richness from the chocolate. I actually wish I also bought another water bottle here because that's how rich it is. It's also very, very soft today. Maybe because we've had it out for a little bit so it's kind of melted. The flavor is good, but man, it is so rich. Well, overall so far, Germany has kind of disappointed me. I was looking forward to it because I always do love this booth, no matter what festival it is. I think the food at the Germany booth is always great. Um, but this year, Festival of Arts, man, the cake was fine. The short rib, like I said, I think I just got a got a bad batch there. Because the table next to me got the braised the short rib, and theirs was way more tender than mine. So I think it was just a bad batch on that one. But first day of the festival, Germany has disappointed me. Let's hope that the next thing we get is a little bit better. But Italy is next, so I don't think that's even possible. I, I don't think anything at Italy could possibly even be better than Germany, even on a bad day. My hopes are in the toilet. <laughs> Shannon said my hopes are in the toilet. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Even though we are surely skipping the Italy booth today, I just want to show you guys a quick glance at the menu. They have the mozzarella fritta, the fancy way of saying a stuffed shell, and a ricotta chocolate cheesecake. A little bit of the menu there. Um, I had the mozzarella last year, and it is $8.50 for a single circle of mozzarella. It was fine, but that's I'm not paying that again. And then some stuffed shells here, um, $9.50 for two stuffed shells. I'm going to also decline. And then an $8 tiny cheesecake, so not interested. Our next stop after Italy is actually America. I'll show you a look at the menu. I don't think I'm going to get anything. They have duck and dumplings, a hummingbird cake, and then a couple of beers here and a beer flight. I tried both of those food items last year and I did not care for them. I actually think the duck, duck and dumplings was one of the worst things I tried at the festival. The hummingbird cake was okay, but they have a better one at home coming. Um, so skipping it this year and we're gonna continue to Japan next. We are waiting in quite the line here in Japan, but they have a couple of things that I really wanted to try, including that Wagyu bun. They also have a sushi donut and then some mochi. I had totally forgot that they also have this sake box at the Japan booth, so you know I have to order that too. Can one say, it, I don't know if this is possible, right down Main Street? Right down Main Street. Oh, awesome, thank you. <laughs> The other one is going to be Promise. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, this is new. I know they put it they put a cup in the in the sake box this year. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. This is what we want. Thank you so much. Okay, so it is Promise and I's friend anniversary. Three years ago today, Promise and I met here at the Festival of the Arts. Getting emotional. <laughs> Don't get emotional, it's okay. And did we get a sake box then? I think we did. I think this We 100% like got a sake I think box. this is like our third year in a row getting a sake box did together. Did you even come to Festival Arts unless you got a sake box? Absolutely I think not. not. So three year friend anniversary. cheers Promise. Cheers. I hope Cheers. you guys caught all that. Very special moment. And delish. I love sake. Why is it spicy? Why is it spicy? <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> so I included some clips, but uh, yeah, 
sake box. Uh, they personalize it for you. The cast members in the J Japan Pavilion, they actually write your name in Japanese on your sake box. Mine says right down Main Street here. And uh, they give you a little cup of sake. They used to pour the sake right in the like wooden box, but now they give you a little cup with it, which I kind of prefer because like now the box isn't getting dirty and I can just take this home with me. Well, after our sake, we're gonna get to some of our food, starting with the Wagyu bun. This is a steamed bun filled with American Wagyu beef served with green shiso sauce for $9.75. I am really hoping this bun is good because $9.75, almost $10 for a single bun, it's better be the best damn bun I've ever had. It's not bad, but it's not $10 worth. Um, I think the cheeseburger pods over that you get in Pandora are actually better than this. They serve something very similar. It's like more cheeseburgery. This does not have cheese in it. Um, but unfortunately it's kind of plain. Like there is a little bit of this green sauce on the plate. I'm gonna have to get another bite actually and dip it in there. Is it better than the beef bowl? I didn't have that. The green sauce is really, really good. I wish there was way more on the plate there, but it really needs that green sauce to kind of add a depth of flavor to this. Now we have got to go for this mochi. And let me tell you, this is a beautiful plate again. They really outdid themselves with this. It looks just like so fresh and it photographs so well. <laughs> My hype woman back there. I don't know how to eat this. I feel like I need to like use a fork because I want to get like some of like the the whipped cream and the the sauce in there. I want to get a berry on there as well. And some of that whipped cream. Cheers. I really want to go for Friday so I can see those. I love it. That is pretty delicious. I love mochi as it is. It's just like a regular red bean mo mochi, I'm pretty sure. But when you add all that fresh strawberry flavor, it's really really delicious. Now it's not like anything crazy. These flavors are like pretty basic and I could probably make this at home, but still it's really, really good. We are skipping through Morocco here, headed for our next booth, which is actually gonna be the Encanto booth. And wow, look at this crowd. How are we even gonna get through? Everyone's just stopped, stopped in the middle here. I thought that everyone was here for the Encanto booth, but actually this might be the shortest I've ever seen the line for the Encanto booth, especially on opening day of a festival. Why. I no know soup. why. No there soup. is no soup. The Encanto soup that was here the past two years, which was the best thing on the entire menu of the entire festival, I think, is no I longer agree. here. No longer here. It was a spicy soup. It had corn in it and it had... Avocado, a... chicken, crema. Oh, so good. So good, but it takes a lot of effort to make it, I understand. but. They're narrowing down almost every menu to just two items this year, which is kind of disappointing, but I don't blame them. All right, P. Well, our two menu items here from Encanto are the chorizo and potato empanada, and then a passion fruit mango cheesecake. Had the mango cheesecake a couple years ago, didn't care for it, but that empanada is really good. Not as good as the soup, though. You guys, look at this new camera. I'm loving it just like McDonald's. I am loving it too. And Promise is making a fun video where she's wearing a white sweatshirt. I don't know how, because I am sweating right now. It, somehow like it's been like 50 degrees all week for the last two weeks. And then today it's like 80 degrees. <laughs> it's pretty dang hot. <laughs> but Promise is wearing a white sweatshirt and everyone is getting to draw something on her sweatshirt, drawing art. Yeah, so we've like got- everyone's own personal art. Wait, hopefully. turn around. Let me see your back. Cause this is what I drew. All right, where is it? Right there. I drew a bone because <laughs> our first time at the Festival of the Arts together, our first time hanging out, um, we actually got bone marrow from Canada here at Festival of the Arts and they brought it back this year. So in, in honor of that, I drew a bone on her sweatshirt. <laughs> and in honor of that, you know we're gonna be getting that. <laughs> we are definitely getting the bone marrow. There's no questions there. But under, I see you're wearing your animal was here shirt and I almost wore that shirt from Shop LBV. I oh, almost yeah, wore yeah. it. And then I saw this one in my closet and I was like, you know what? This is a little bit more colorful. I'm gonna throw this on. Stains. It does, it does. That's why, it, that's why I almost wore it. But 
but I decided to go uh, Rainbow Connection here in honor of the show that they have on Spaceship Earth. If you guys want to shop, actually, I don't even think the shirt is for sale. This was like a Patreon exclusive. Yeah. But if you guys want to shop for any of the shirts that you see in my videos, uh, the link is going to be in the description. Okay, so yes, I am really sad about the soup, but I still got the empanada. It's it's another classic, another favorite every year. Empanadas all around, except your your guys' is so much prettier than mine. Your guys' is so much prettier. Yeah, of course. Really, well, some places haven't let you do that. He literally asked. Yeah, yeah. Her. He knew. He was like, no, no aioli. Way. Like, he knew. He said, Don't <laughs> I, I went up there and he's like, but no aioli on yours, right? And I was like, ah, you know me too well. So shout out. I think his name was Danny, right? Shout out to you. But everyone's got the fancy empanadas and I got the non fancy, but it's so good. And for the sake of the art, I'm showing you the fancy empanada with all the sauces on it because I got it without because no aioli. This is the chorizo and potato empanada with turmeric aioli and annatto aioli. Not sure what that is. It is $6.75. All right, the empanada. Oh my God, this is so hot. And I've been taking <laughs> I've been taking videos for B-roll and photos with these empanadas for the past five minutes at least. And this is still so hot. I, I can barely pick it up, honestly. Delicious. The dough is so flaky and crunchy, and then that chorizo in there is nice and smoky with a little bit of the potatoes. Delicious. I bet it would be even better with all the sauces on top, but even without, this is a great dish at the festival. I, I get it every time, every festival. You have to get an empanada. I feel like everyone would agree with that, and uh, this is a really good empanada. I've prepared a dance for you, Kristen. Oh, dance? <laughs> Thank you. Wait, Shannon is actually a dancer, so show us a real move. Do, ooh, do the, do the trolls three. <laughs> What's the Trolls 3? It's on TikTok now. It's like the... Oh. Okay, enough dancing, but I want to give a shout out to my friends. Shannon, who this is our third year coming to Festival of the Arts together, our, our third time eating, sharing an empanada on opening day of the Epcot Festival of the Arts. And she's making a video as well on YouTube, so follow her. Her name is Shannon Marie with... Shannon Marie with a couple N's in there and a couple E's and a couple extra letters. Okay, so the link will be in the description <laughs> <laughs> to her page. And then I'm also with Phoebe, uh, I mean Phoebe. Oh, um, Disney with... Fe no, I'm just kidding. Fixie Dust and Phoebe. And her fir this is her first time first at Festival of the Arts. Arts. What do you think so far? I love it. I love... I want to take it's more like time exploring all the artwork and everything. Oh, it perfect. just seems so happy and colorful and vibrant. I wish we had... Like, I wish we could combine Flower and Garden with Festival of the Arts, honestly. But yeah, like the topiaries oh, yeah, for Festival yeah. of the Arts. That would be yeah. good. That would be good. Yeah, but, but the food is amazing at this festival, yeah. from what I've eaten. Yeah, Expensive, the, but good. the food is great at this festival. Phoebe's also making a video. The description, the link will be in the description. So head to the description and find everyone's videos. That means I gotta edit fast. You're linking it. Oh well, I'll, I'll link your page. I'll okay. link your page, not the video. I was stressing. We're gonna get this on quick. Overnight. So of course, along with all the food, there is a ton of art to look at as well, which I love that about this festival. But I'm kind of just grazing over it because I'm gonna come back uh, next week and show you guys all this. But look at this really cool tiki room one while we're here. I actually really like this one. And it's awesome 229 Woo! that empanada is a hit every single year and you know what else is a hit every year the creamy brie in a bread bowl from france so we're heading up france now before i do hop in line let's take a look at the menu here we've got that brie in a bread bowl there are also two salmon dishes that's interesting and they will also serve them in like a little duo they give you both of the salmon dishes and then i'm pretty sure that's a chocolate molten cake that sounds so good Oh, are you gonna make it fresh here? I'm gonna make it now. Oh, wow. Uh, you wanna film? Uh, yes, I'd love to film it. All right. It's good. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. This is the fancy molten cake. They're doing it fresh. The, the sauces are going down fresh. Wow. Artist. Artiste. Yeah. Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> Celis Picasso. 
So I did want to get two of the foods at this booth. However, I always get the, the brie and the bread bowl. So I figured I'd skip it this time. I already know it's really good. Phoebe got it and it looks excellent over there. Yeah. So just take my word, it's awesome. But I did get the chocolate cake. I am not even gonna try and pronounce the name of this here, but this is the Molten right. Valorana chocolate cake with hazelnut crunch and mango and raspberry coolest for $9.25. Well, I am gonna get to the innards of this chocolate cake here. Promise, what is the word of the fest? I mean, I'm gonna have to go with innards. Like, I, I didn't create the word, I was inspired by, you know. By what? Shows like Game of Thrones and salt burn things like that inspire me to say the word innards and these are all things with innards you promise keeps saying innards and it's disturbing all of us we all would like her to stop <laughs> all right let's crack open this cake here it's got that hazelnut crunch on top that's good my mother would love this it's so chocolatey though you know what it reminds me of kind of the warm Irish chocolate pudding cake from the Food and Wine Festival, the Ireland booth. It kind of reminds me of that. It's very rich. It's very, very rich. Not quite as good as that, but it's very good. And also, this is almost like $10. So, like, the one from the Ireland booth is like maybe five. Um, it's good. Is it worth $10? Maybe not. But it was really pretty. The guy was literally, like, painting on the dish. Um, to serve it to me, which I loved. I thought that was awesome. Like, how often do you get to just go to a booth and just, they're painting your dish for you. I think that's so cool. Not only am I regretting not getting the brie bread bowl, but I'm also regretting not being getting a water because I am so thirsty now. All these rich chocolate desserts are just making me so thirsty. I wish I got a water bottle. I am gonna run to the next stand and get a water bottle now. Okay. The brie cheese bowl is so good. I'm dreaming about it and I just finished it like 10 minutes ago. I, yeah, I regret not getting it myself. It's so good. Go get it. Is it the best thing you ate today? Yes. Yes. Wow. All right, guys, you know what time it is? Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly in the face Peanut butter jelly. No, guys, no, 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 no. You know what time it is? Bone marrow? Bone marrow time. Oh, that was so disgusting last time. Let's try it again. Time to get some bones. Time to get some bones. Oh, yeah. Ryan is getting uh, boned in Canada. I cannot wait to get boned in Canada. It'll be my first time, actually. I can't wait to... <laughs> He's new to this. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta keep these jokes I want to make on mine because it's not appropriate. <laughs> All right, Canada, we have arrived for your bones. Now, along with the bones, they also have some beets, the wild mushroom risotto, a favorite every year, and then a couple of beverages. When you come up to order your bone, you must say, can I please have one of your finest bones? <laughs> it's a requirement. <laughs> well, we've all got our bones here, and we're at the same exact setup, the same crime scene that we were at two years ago when we all ate this bone marrow together, and I was the only one who liked it. This is like tradition. This is a Greek tradition for Maria. This is the roasted bone marrow with onion marmalade, pickled mushrooms, and petite lettuce for ten fifty. Who wants to eat the bone with me? Who's ready to eat I'm their ready. bone? I've been ready. Oh, hold on, hold it's a on. Greek tradition, Maria. It's a great this is a Greek tradition. Opa. Opa. Oh it's not my a goodness. Greek. It is Greek. It is Greek. It Trust is, me. Is Look at all that. Look at all that. Okay. I'm it's like a booger. All right. Oh, wow. Cheers, guys. I don't want to lose my that marrow. Oh, it's so gross. It's real good. Kristen likes it. He loves it. So. I What's the flavor profile? So it's like I like ate fat. a jellyfish right. with jello and balsamic. It's right. like butter, but like not good. It's just fat. Like if you've ever had like pork belly, the fat on the pork belly, that's what it tastes like, but like a more rich, deep flavor. And then the balsamic and the onion on there just complement it so well. The balsamic, I think, is too hard. I've been so, so too harsh. Derby, yeah, the brown derby has bone like marrow. So if you want an actually really good bone marrow, brown derby has it. There's no um, Greek salad flavoring. Um, it's just bone marrow, and I think that's actually better. Nothing about it. Is it good? Mm hmm. It is good. I'm the only one who likes it again this year. Um, but yeah, I love me some bone marrow.
Do you think the others' minds were changed? Like, what, what do you, of course, it's, you're still going to be the only one. Yeah. No, but I like bone marrow at the Brown Derby. I think there's too much jam. I think they're trying to save money. Because, again, I got confused. I was like, oh, is bone marrow purple now? No. I had one little tiny piece of bone marrow. I disagree. I think that onion flavor and the balsamic just is perfect with the bone marrow. I think it's weird to not like aioli and mayo, but like <laughs> oh bone <my> marrow. <laughs> hey, 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 whoa, whoa. And now for something that we all like, the wild mushroom risotto with truffle shavings and Zinfandel reduction for $9.75. Every year, this is a favorite. They also serve this dish actually in Le Cellier, the restaurant here in Canada. One of my favorite restaurants, in fact. I think it is absolutely delicious. It comes on the side with their filet in Le Cellier, but during Festival of the Arts, you could just get a scoop of it. Oh. It looks like just rice. It's not, it's not just rice. It is creamy. It has great truffle flavor, very Parmesan-y. In the past, they used to have like big shavings of Parmesan on top. They've just resulted to cheaper shreds. Um, I would have preferred the bigger Parmesan chunks, but man, that is still really good. We are coming up on our last couple of booths here. I couldn't pass up Deco Delights. They have a Neapolitan dessert trio. That is actually the only food on the menu here. And then we've got a couple beverages, including an espresso martini down there. This is the espresso martini featuring Boyd and Blair potato vodka for $12. Okay, before we get into any of this food, because there is a lot that we're about to try, I have to try the espresso martini here first. It's not a day at Disney with me, unless you get an espresso martini, and Promise picked this up for me, and she don't even like espresso martinis. I'm starting to learn how. You're starting to like them. I, my, my influence has rubbed off. <laughs> Let's try this one. How much was this? 15 for this? Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not bad, but for $15, you can go $12. Okay, but for like three more dollars, you could go in one of the sit down restaurants and get a way better espresso martini that is way bigger. Oh my. The, the, yeah, yeah, there's no coffee beans. There's no like foam on top. This is probably straight out of a dispenser, which I don't like. I need it freshly shaken. I need that, that little foam on top. I need the beans. For $12, I wouldn't get this. Also from the Deco Delights booth, we got the Neapolitan Dessert Trio. It comes with a chocolate tart, a vanilla bean cheesecake, and strawberry mousse for $5.50. I know, it does look really fun. We're gonna do like a little speed round of these dessert trio desserts. Starting with the strawberry. I hear this one might not be the worst of the trio, so we'll start, we'll start low and work our way up. Not that great. <laughs> the cheesecake's got to be good. Vanilla cheesecake. Also, moment of appreciation for, again, the presentation of these desserts. Fantastic. <laughs> the cheesecake is pretty good. I like the, like, little cookie piece that they put on, on the bottom. It's like a little shortbread cookie. But now onto the chocolate, which I'm anticipating to be the best of the three. I've had so much like rich chocolate today though. <laughs> I didn't get a water this time either. I keep doing that. Oh, I got you water. Oh yeah. The chocolate one is definitely the best. That one's really good. I would actually say out of all of the chocolate desserts that I've had today, which has been a lot, this is the best one because it's not like so rich. Like the other two were insanely rich that I could only have one bite. This one I could actually eat the whole thing of. And surprise, Hello. Stephanie and Denny are here as Hello. well with the grilled cheese. We eat this together every year. It's a tradition. It's a tradition. It is a tradition. I heard you guys got the bone marrow without us, though. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. We, did. we were late, though. It's our fault. I, I would go back and get it again. <laughs> Let's do it. Really? Well, another year, another successful first day of Epcot's Festival of the Arts. This is seriously my favorite Epcot Festival for so many reasons. I think the food is delicious, the best out of all the festivals. Not to mention the plating, all the dishes look beautiful. And then I just have so many traditions with my great friends. We always come to opening day of Festival of the Arts and we just have a great time. So many, so many classes. We get the bone marrow. I hang out with my friends Stephanie and Shannon every single year. So it's always great to see everyone and have a great time enjoying Festival of the Arts.
before I head out, I want to thank some Patreon subscribers. Michael, Emily, Mulligan, Lindsay, Ashley, Misty, Paul, Lisa, Barbara, Angela, Dustin and Nancy, John, Paul, Leah, Tracy, Armando, the Latham Thomas family, Adam and Jen, Wayne, Carol, Karis, Marie, Dante, Shelby, Daniela, Marcel, Erica, Linda, Mike, Christina, Brittany, the Cal Kane's family, Chelsea, Pickle, Travis, Catherine, Ethan, Tori, Anne, and Steven. And thank you guys so much for hanging with me on this opening day. You're gonna have to let me know in the comments whether you're coming to Festival of the Arts or not and what you're looking forward to trying the most. I'd say my favorite thing that I tried to be today it had to be that steak sandwich. It was phenomenal. Easily the best thing I had of the day. And I'm so excited to come back and try even more. I have a couple other videos for this festival plan coming very soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.